All right, guys, how's it going? I'm pretty sure you haven't been living under a rock the past few days, so you probably heard that Doom finally got its Vulcan implementation, and there's been one or two surprising results going around the web. I say surprising, but the fact is, if you've been watching my channel, you're probably not going to be all that surprised. But let's take a look at what exactly is implemented in the new Doom Vulcan patch. Over at AMD, they're talking about Vulcan substantially reducing the API overhead, which is something I will talk about later in this video. And they're saying that Doom benefits from Vulcan support by using several great features, including asynchronous shaders, so that will be interesting to see, shader intrinsics, which is something that myself and Jason touched on in the interview video. Effectively, what these do is provides a way for game developers to directly access graphics hardware instructions in situations where those instructions would normally be abstracted by an API. So effectively, it's like getting even closer to the metal. And this is something that's been done on game consoles in order to extract more performance from the GPU. And now, if you've got a Radeon graphics card, your PC now has the same capability. And the final one is a frame flip optimization, which basically passes the frame directly to the display once it's ready, i.e. it skips the copy and save. Now, my guess is that all of these together maybe contribute a few percent, but none in particular will be worth an awful lot, apart from perhaps the asynchronous shaders, which could be pretty effective on certain cards. AMD is claiming a massive 27% uplift for the RX 480, that's at 1080p, and 23% uplift at 1440p. Obviously, I have benchmarked the hell out of the game, and you will find that these numbers are more than just a little bit conservative. Over at GeForce.com, we've got a Doom tab here, but there's nothing else really on the game. Nothing about the Vulcan patch that I can find, which again, maybe not all that surprising. ID Software have of course released their own article, and also an FAQ, which is actually quite interesting. There's one or two little bugs, yeah? Vulcan is not currently supported on NVIDIA GPUs with 2GB of RAM on Windows 7 or the GTX 690, which is going to affect very few people, I would think. Is this 2 gigabytes of VRAM or 2 gigabytes of RAM? I'm not entirely sure. You can always run on OpenGL anyway. But what I found interesting, once again, does Doom support asynchronous compute when running on the Vulkan API? And currently asynchronous compute is only supported on AMD GPUs, and we are working with NVIDIA to enable asynchronous compute in Vulkan on NVIDIA GPUs. Now we heard that one before, Ashes of the Singularity, still waiting on that driver, and also the Hitman developers were working to resolve the lack of async. I'll talk a bit more about that later as well. Doom on Vulkan is obviously a very big thing, and is likely to be a herald of things to come over the next year and onward as more and more developers turn to Vulkan instead of the older APIs like DX11 and OpenGL. The last thing to go over is asynchronous compute is disabled unless the game is running with temporal super sampled anti-aliasing or none at all. For some unknown reason, a few websites out there did not benchmark using TSSAA and instead used the Subpixel Morphological or the SMAA, which in my experience is the worst of the lot. Why did we do that? I've got no idea whatsoever. What you really came here for was the benchmarks, so let's go on with that. Right, so this is the scene that I will be benchmarking. It's got a nice long drop at the start. There is plenty of smoke around and fire. It's got some decent long draw distances, which help to hit to the CPU hard. I'm going to be benching four cards, the GTX 1080, the 980 Ti, the RX 480, and the R9285. Those are the cards that I have on hand right now. Jump down into a very nice action sequence with plenty of mobs around, including some good melee combat and an exploding barrel. This sequence was benchmarked many, many times on all cards, and I am happy with the results because they were very consistent. Right, so we're going to start with OpenGL at 1080p Ultra settings. I didn't choose any of the nightmare settings, they don't really do anything, and that makes it a custom setting, so I just decided to stick with the Ultra settings. In these benchmarks, I will mostly be concentrating on the GTX 1080 and the RX 480, as they are the newest cards. So in OpenGL, at 1080p Ultra settings, the GTX 1080 has a massive 73% lead over the RX 480. As you might expect, these numbers are very similar to what I had in my RX 480 review video. Now looking at Vulkan, at the same 1080p Ultra settings, we can see that the RX 480 has really closed the gap, with a massive increase in the frame rate. What was a 73% lead for the GTX 1080 is down to 32%, meaning that the gap has more than halved, simply by switching from OpenGL 
to Vulcan. Looking at the combined chart, we can see that all cards do gain from the switch to Vulcan. So that's good. The darker bars are of course Vulcan and the lighter bars open GL. Clearly the AMD cards are gaining an awful lot more, especially the RX 480. And here we can see the proof. The percentage gain switching from open GL to Vulcan. The GTX 1080 gains just under 10% with the 980 Ti gaining just over 5%. The RX 480 however gains almost 44% and the R9285 gains 29%. I believe the R9285 is limited by VRAM, it only has a 2GB of VRAM and that is why it is not gaining as much because it is being held back ultimately by the lack of VRAM. Still very interesting to see though because certain other games have shown one or two issues with the lack of VRAM but Doom's Vulcan implementation appears to work pretty well even on 2GB cards. So AMD were claiming up to 27% but in my benchmarks they're up at 44%. As you will see later some others on the web found even higher gains. Moving on to 1440p, OpenGL again, ultra settings. The GTX 1080 has a massive 93% lead over the RX 480. The RX 480 was still pretty playable, but the R9285 was really struggling at this resolution on OpenGL. Moving on to Vulcan 1440p, and the gap is down to around 35%, as the RX 480 has once again gained a massive amount of FPS, with the R9285 also gaining hugely, yet still not really being all that playable. Again, 2GB of VRAM at 1440p ultra settings, 44 frames per second may be not all that bad in actuality. Looking at the comparison chart, we're starting to see a kind of similar story here. The gains on the Nvidia cards have practically evaporated, but the gains on the AMD cards are still absolutely massive. And once again here we can see it, 1% gain and 2.6% gain for the Nvidia cards. In all honesty, that's pretty much in margin of error territory. 47.1% for the RX 480 and 38.8% for the R9285. So the, so the AMD cards have gained even more at 1440p compared to 1080p and that is a bit of a surprise. Now I'm still getting used to my benchmarking and it's a lot of work and a lot of it needs to be automated in order to shorten the time but mostly it's being done by hand right now and when I saw my own results I was a little concerned that something had gone wrong but as I mentioned taking a look around the web it became clear that my results were absolutely fine. Over at computer base we see the Fury X thrashing the GTX 1070 under Vulcan and making some huge gains over the OpenGL implementation. 110.4 FPS compared to 72.6 FPS, that is a 52% increase in performance. And in their benchmark, Computer Base's RX 480 under Vulcan has gained over 40%. Looking at their percentage numbers, Fury X likely beats the GTX 1080. And that's worth thinking about for a variety of reasons. The RX 480 is pretty close to the 980 Ti, and again we see that with my numbers as well. This is an overclocked GTX 980 Ti, by the way, the MSI G1 Gaming, up against my throttling reference RX 480. And I said a month ago that maybe a 1500 MHz RX 480 could match a Titan X under DX12 or Vulcan. Well, this is the proof of it. Sadly though, I don't think the RX 480 is realistically capable of 1500 MHz, but we will find out about that soon. But there's no question, once you get rid of the CPU bottleneck and the older APIs, the RX 480 is an awful lot closer to where it should be. Right, so realistically, what is this all about? How can AMD gain almost 50%, over 50% in the case of the Fury X, simply by switching the API? Well, everybody has their own ideas. A lot of people claiming it's this asynchronous shaders, asynchronous compute. For me though, the majority, the huge majority of the difference is about Vulcan's substantially reduced API overhead. The background work a CPU does to interpret what a game asks of the hardware. And luckily, in Doom, we have a way to test it. Up here at the top right, here we have the GTX 980 Ti under OpenGL. As you can see, the CPU and GPU are hanging at an average of around 6 milliseconds. And when you look at the same scene in Vulcan, the CPU and GPU are hanging around 6 milliseconds. In other words, the Nvidia cards aren't really seeing this overhead issue, as both the CPU and GPU are performing very similarly, whether it's OpenGL or Vulcan. Now take a look at the RX 480 under OpenGL. This red number is a bug. 
It's not that bad, but it doesn't seem to shift. The important thing here, however, is the yellow CPU numbers with an average around 10 milliseconds under OpenGL. We can also see the numbers here for the CPU utilization. Pretty good, actually, using all eight threads of my 6700K CPU. But here we can see I only get 100 FPS in OpenGL at this part of the benchmark. And it is mostly because of this average of 10 milliseconds on the CPU. And here is the exact same scene in Vulkan, and we can clearly see the massive reduction in CPU overhead. We are down to an average from 10 down to 7 milliseconds, and the GPU frame times look absolutely fine as well. This is the vast part of this 40 FPS gain. And we can also clearly see that the CPUs, that though the game is well threaded before, it is even better threaded now. Vulkan gets rid of AMD's API overhead, and this is what contributes the vast part of the FPS gain. But what about the other stuff? The shader intrinsics, the asynchronous compute. I've got no idea what the shader intrinsics are doing in terms of FPS. Obviously it's going to be helping, but like I said, it's probably not an awful lot. Same with the flip queue optimization. Maybe there's 1% gain there or something like that. But as far as the asynchronous shaders goes, we know that it only works with anti-aliasing off or with Doom's own temporal super sampling anti-aliasing. So I benchmarked the game, the same scene, with every type of anti-aliasing in the game. And these were the results. As you can see, with anti-aliasing off, 158.1 frames per second. Next best, however, was NVIDIA's temporal anti-aliasing at 153.2. This is on the RX 480, and then came the temporal super sampled anti-aliasing at 152.7. All the rest of the anti-aliasing kicked around 135. So asynchronous compute is obviously doing something. This temporal super sampled anti-aliasing is a nicer anti-aliasing than the rest, and yet the performance is still right up there, almost as good as anti-aliasing off. Given the other results, this must mean that asynchronous compute is indeed working pretty well. For me on the RX 480, possibly contributing as much as 4 or 5%. Again, if we look at computer bases numbers, the massive lead for the Fury X, which of course has many more shaders, 4096 shaders, which gains more from asynchronous compute. And this is probably why the Fury X gains over 50%, while the RX 480 only gains 40%. Now remember, the RX 480 has double the VRAM, so that should be helping as well, although the Fury X does have more bandwidth. However, I find it likely that asynchronous compute is still mostly helping to fill in those gaps in the graphics cards like the Fury X, which just have a little bit too many shaders sitting around unused without async filling the gaps. So for me, that is pretty much why we are seeing all of this. Remember even the Nvidia cards gained at 1080p. Almost 10% for the GTX 1080? Again, this is what you would expect to see with a slight CPU overhead. At lower resolutions, the more powerful cards will see CPU overhead issues. But when you move up the resolution, those CPU overhead issues become less, at least on the NVIDIA hardware. And this is why we are now seeing at 1440p, almost no gains for the NVIDIA cards because they don't have asynchronous shaders, they don't have the flip queue. Effectively, what you're seeing here is a very, very small remaining CPU overhead at 1440p. We are still seeing a very large CPU overhead on the AMD cards, but as the resolution increases, the asynchronous shader work also increases. And for me, this is why the gains continue on the AMD cards and get even stronger on stuff like the Fury X. Right, so wrapping this one up, what do I think? There's a lot going on here. A lot of unsurprising stuff like Nvidia making no gains, and a lot of surprising stuff like the massive level of gains that we are seeing from AMD. I really wasn't expecting that. But let's be frank here. 63.7 FPS compared to 125 is unacceptable. The GTX 1080 should never be nearly twice as fast as the RX 480. So for me, all this stuff, Vulcan, getting rid of the CPU overhead, Polaris should have done that anyway without the need for Vulcan. AMD has known about GCN's CPU overhead issue for four and a half years, and yet Polaris still has it. For me, that's just not good enough. The RX 480 should be sitting around 80 to 90 frames per second anyway, even in OpenGL. For me, that was the most disappointing thing about the RX 480. Now we see the true performance of the RX 480 in the next generation APIs. Around about 35% slower than the GTX 1080. Now I do believe that this is going to be close on best case for the RX 480. And it's not that far away from the 1070. And it's around about where I said it should be. 
but AMD has got a lot of work cut out for themselves in order to get more of this and a lot less of this. What difference would it have made if the RX 480 had launched with this number in Doom instead of this one? Similarly, Rise of the Tomb Raider just got a new DX12 patch which fixed the vast majority of their massive issues. So now all the AMD cards are much closer in Rise of the Tomb Raider as well. And as you maybe know, Total War Warhammer DX12 launched a few days after the RX 480 launched. That would be three games. Next generation APIs, DX12 and Vulcan, which would have shown the RX 480 much, much closer to the GTX 1070. Now in my review of the RX 480, I also said that the RX 480 will lose to the 1060 in DX11, but will win in DX12 and Vulcan. It is pretty apparent looking at these numbers that the RX 480 is going to be well ahead of the 1060 in these next generation API games. The GTX 1080 will be much further than 35% faster than the 1060. That is all it is here, in Doom, compared to the RX 480. I will of course be trying to get hold of a 1060 in order to test this, but those two look like pretty interesting competition against each other. So let's at least hope so and maybe even get some prices driven down, even though the RX 480 is a good price already. A few more games like this and the 1080 and the 1070 would be drastically getting reduced in price as well. So really, AMD, you really just need to get the finger out and get these things right. A week before launch would be perfect, not two weeks afterwards. The final thing for me to do is to declare Melotus Doe the winner of the Groundbreakers giveaway in my RX 480 review, I completely forgot all about it, so contact me through YouTube and I'll send you the review key. YouTube's absolutely terrible at letting people contact other people, unless they have their own channel. I'll catch you later guys.